This Chop and Brew Kvike Connection video is brought to you with support from Imperial Yeast. Their Kvyking Kvike Blend Summer Seasonal Release is available throughout the month of August at your homebrew supplier. Just Kvike it. Me and Joel like scoot a little left towards the dung. <laughs> I know, I was like, well, if Joel fits in frame, then Seriously, we're all gonna like... fit in <laughs> just one. <laughs> the tallest homebrew in the world! <laughs> so these were both. Mm -hmm. This is one batch. It's um, one word. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's one. It's like fifty pale, fifty pills, mashed for three hours with juniper berries, Ew. crushed up in the mash, and then run off. Uh, hit with just like a one ounce, I think maybe, of Callista hops, not ever boiled. Brought to one seventy for about fifteen minutes, and then I ambiently cooled it throughout the course of a day. We left and came back, so it, like we let it ambiently cool down to about a hundred. I took it downstairs, split it in half, pitched Imperials Kvyking Kvike blend, their summer seasonal, and then the other one, a rehydrated jar of the Otterdale Kvike that I had gotten from Evar, huh. which was really fun to watch. Like I took some of the first runnings wort, put it in a measuring glass with these like dried mm -hmm. flakes, and just kind of like tried mm -hmm. to reincorporate them. Put those in a jar when we left for the day while the wort is chilling down. By the time I got home, it was like bubbling mm. and fizzing. It was like, throw me in something. <laughs> so the one on the left is, uh, you know, Imperial's blend. Mm -hmm. The one on the right is a Norwegian dried strain. How did they finish did, out? Uh, the Imperial, so these both were 1060 start. This one Jeez. ended at 1009. This one ended at 1020, which Ivar was oh. like, that's... That's centuries of expectation right there. Oh, it doesn't mm. go low, mm. much lower? Huh. I mean, you could, it might, but mm. he no, wasn't surprised. Whereas I was like, yeah. in America, yeah. we're we for single digits, but we, we <laughs> ferment all the way down. Yeah. I wonder why it wouldn't. That's interesting. And you can tell the difference. It because, leaves it sweeter because for sure. Because some of these strains have high mm -hmm. alcohol tolerance. Mm -hmm. Some of these traditional... Yeah. Kvake strains have yeah. like high. But if you intentionally balance. brewed it to be 1080 and mm -hmm. it still went to 1020 or 1090, sure, you, know you could mean? start higher. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe that's just the terminal gravity that it gets down to. So, this being my first, so then the first day I left the lid on loose and I wrapped it in blankets um, and it kept like nine, it was like 94 the next morning. But I was taking a reading every day and it had dropped about half of what it was going to do in like 10 hours. And by the was next the day, mm -hmm, and by the wow. next day, it was pretty much all the way done. Oh. Granted, I closed the lid at that point because the house smelled like somebody was baking like pineapple Banana sourdough and bread. Junk. Yeah, my mine, I did the baking blend, and it was kind of like banana y and mm. maybe yeah, I didn't think of pineapples, yeah. but it, when I would go into that room, it was like. Oof. Did you do an open ferment on that, or did you have an airlock? On no, that? I have an airlock. Really, and it's still. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, I also had, might have had the door shut, so the room would say warmer, and I was trying to get as warm as possible. I don't know how warm it got, but it got over 78, because that's all my yeah. thing goes up to. And it was it was definitely over that for, like, the and only recently yeah. have I seen it come, when it's done, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, now it's 78. Again. Yeah. And so, so even fermenting that indoors, that was just from like the vigorous fermentation. It stayed up in the 90s like mm -hmm. that. Wrapped in blankets and wow. Evar was like, taste it every day. So I tasted a little each day and I left. Huh. I made my little notes, but then by the third day it was done. Uh -huh. And then we left last weekend. So it's been in these buckets. Um, I'm going to try to like package it to some mm -hmm. degree. He either said like really pressure safe soda bottles or I have some one gallon glass jugs. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing scientific about the way they brew. He's like, yeah, sanitize a funnel and pour it in. I was like, you're not worried about oxidation? He's just kind of, anytime oh, I ask him a really nerdy beer question, yeah. he's just like, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Vikings a thousand years ago weren't Ra like, oh, oh I wonder if the splashback's going to oxidize my raw <laughs> ale. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, yeah. I Granted, we're still doing this in a pretty modern application, but a little bit of it's yeah. been just kind of like, like he says, just kvike it. Mm -hmm. I don't like, get any yeah. juniper. Character, yeah, I was going to ask. I don't get a whole lot. It was only two tablespoons, yeah. and it was like, you know, Penzi spices, mm -hmm. 
put through a grinder so yeah okay. i know if the branches were in there like they do the steep and mm -hmm. it was an attempt oh another thing i forgot i did this we put in a two cups of the spruce tip syrup oh in the boil just because he was like mm -hmm. since i know you have it put that in but i'll i think his yeast is more aromatic mm -hmm. i think that beer is you said pineapple, but also yeah, like a ripe mangoey or just like yeah. a ripe kind of fruity fruitness like that. I get, and it's changed a little bit, which mm -hmm. he says it will because it's kind of like alive. But I've gotten from the beginning of this, it's definitely sweeter out of the two examples: yeah. mango, cherry, hay grass. I get a lot of sweet tea, like actual, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of these tanniky tea notes, orange and orange peel, mm -hmm. which most of like seem to have like orange and citrus in their general yeah. wheelhouse. But then the Imperial one, which is drier, as it would be for being 10 points lower, but I get a lot of personally white wine, white grape, Saison, like this one jumps out of me. I was gonna say like a yeasty more. character, like more of the yeast character, like the peppery, or the Saison-y. Yeah, like I definitely say. get black and white pepper. Yeah. It's even a little less zippy though than it was for the gate, which is kind of interesting. <clears throat> Still white whiny, but yeah. not nearly as like, ooh, white wine. Mm -hmm. I find it really interesting that the the Otterdahl, Otterdahl, mm -hmm. uh, this one, like, well, being what I would normally consider, you know, like, under attenuated if it finishes at, you know, right. 120, it's like not wordy. Mm -hmm. It's like still, right. it's very full of flavor. And but it's it, not carbonated either. Yeah, it's like, doesn't have any of those, like, kind of off, well, I would consider an off flavor in, right. in a beer that finishes that high. In an under-fermented beer, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and he has said ones from different parts of the country will have different final gravity. So that 1020 is more just of what he knows to expect from this. No, it's interesting. There's a, <laughs> there's a map of, on one of the, uh, one of the either Milk the Funk or maybe the Lars guy with all the, like, log mm. stuff that that one, blog but there's a map of where the strains come from mm -hmm. in Norway okay. and what kind of like what they do and what what their temperature range there's like this map with all these dots and you can and they have different colors of dots of for the different strains and it's kind of interesting to see mm -hmm. like where they all come from and this one you know might be from a certain part and maybe it's more common and popularly found in a certain area and they all do different things, all these traditional yeasts that are just in that country. I learned that, well, that what we know of as this Kvay Kvike strains is specific to Norway. I didn't know if it was other Scandinavian countries, but it's, there's certainly farmhouse traditional yeast strains across the whole world, mm -hmm. you know, in every country. But what we're talking about as these Kvike strains is specific <clears throat> to Norway. I didn't, I didn't realize that. The next challenge will be, he says you kind of collect the Kvek sludge, sludge at the bottom and smear it really thin over non-stick pizza paper <laughs> or wax and then paper dry or it or, in uh -huh. a low oven. Yeah. Um, I bought parchment and he was like, hey, I should have got wax. And I was like, oh, I thought wax would have interfered. I don't know. Uh -huh. But yeah. since I don't want to have my oven on because it's so hot, I'm going to try to do it on my electric roaster pan like I would dehydrate my peppers. Can't you just air dry it too for days? I think you can, but it can also just like Go bad. spoil if you don't oh. kind of rush the process oh, to some okay. degree. Yeah. I could probably, I'm totally probably wrong because I know yeah. a lot of people There's dip a stick in it and hang yeah. the stick up. Yeah, and I saw something about somebody doing it on one of those and, blogs too and they just, I don't remember if they did it in an oven or not. I guess I'm just trying to parse out with this, like I had and mashed at 160. I don't know if I said that. Oh wow! Yeah, it's crazy mashed. That's, high. It, oh, it just held that temp for like almost three hours in that igloo cooler. Yeah, it breaks so many rules. It's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out so delicious. But like, I don't know. Like, is how much of this? It's like, shocking that this still gets to 09, right? Yeah, yep. mashing at 160. That's yeah. another velocity experiment or something. Uh -huh. Like, you know how the mash temp and like. You mm -hmm. still can get low, but anyway, you were. Well, I was talking. just wondering, like, how different would it be if you had to, like boil it like a typical beer? Like, how much of this is like the yeast versus the the bugs? I don't know. I don't know. Because Ivar sent the bottles he sent us over the past year and a half. 
Some have been raw and some have been boiled. And the ones that are boiled are boiled for like three hours. <laughs> Everything about this, there's nothing like... It's to the extreme. There's no like 60 mash, 60 boil. Yeah. Pitch is quick. It's always Mash like, at 160, what? boil for 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> 1150 or OG. But I mean they make them. You know, they yeah. specifically will call it raw ale if it doesn't boil and the rest are... And most of the ones I've seen them do videos of are boiled. Are you suggesting... Cauldrons. Or are you suggesting, or are either of you suggesting that there's actually something in here that would have fermented this wort other than the yeast that you pitched? Yeah, I mean, I from think what that's I kind of the thing, right? I don't, I don't know. Think you you would think it, but it's something else besides. But with like, Mike being such an aggressive fermenter, though, that tends to kind of like take over. Yeah, that's true. Like, I mean, I don't think there's lacto, pedio, uh, whatever else. Mm -mm might be in the air i mean i'm not uh, if you left i'm pointing off camera if you had these beers for like sitting around for like six months and there was anything that kind mm -hmm. of did inoculate itself in there maybe mm -hmm. it would take a foothold over a period yeah. of time but these are so young that i wouldn't think that we're tasting any sort of wild mm -hmm. fermentation yeah. the only thing that Ivar's ever asked is he, or he warns he's like if it gets too vinegary dump it okay so i don't there well, may be that something would be in the there that acetic after a very acid, low, yeah. low, 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 low. I think vinegar a long, is long, long time. Vinegar yeah. is often, I think, mm -hmm. acetic acid. But there's been times where I was like, oh, I've still got this sample, because what I did was he sent those last time, the New Year's Eve batch. It was four bottles, and then we dumped all of the dregs into one bottle that I have. And I was like, should I pitch this like super quake mm -hmm. into something? And he was like, well, if it smells like vinegar, dump it. Oh. So that was more about the yeast, but I think it's probably because the same thing can happen to these. So I, I would assume that if anything else is there besides true yeast, mm -hmm. it's something that has like an acidic, acetic mm -hmm. potential. Sure. Yeah. What's, what's your long-term I mean, they plan? ferment open. So yeah. I mean, like, the idea is like, you know, and they well, drink so it does fresh and quick. Anchor, you know, so do like... Brewer, production breweries occasionally. I mean, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're going True, to True, but not like in a woodshed in that, that outside. No, no. <laughs> yeah. It depends on <laughs> With dudes like dipping their little like brewers Well, I mean, if you're it. trying to liken it to spontaneous fermentation at Cool Ship in Belgium, like that's a different thing. Like, I don't know if that's what they're doing or not, or if they just do it open because they just like to do it that way. Because if your desired yeast is in there and actively fermenting, then it doesn't really matter if it's open mm -hmm. or not. It's not going to get some floaty thing and go in there and like turn it to you know vinegar. Right. It's not going to happen. Yeah. What's your plan for packaging this? I don't know. I think, I, I mean, I've got those gallon kegs, mm -hmm. so maybe I'll do a gallon, keg it and carb it, and then a gallon and leave it still in those glass jugs. Yeah. I don't know, there's just more of it than I really need, other than I want mm -hmm. to know. Is there like 2.5 each, kind or what? That's probably what it's at. Yeah. Take? Probably about two. Because I've been taking like samples yeah. every three days, and there's we'll, only three to start You could with. even, uh, unscientifically, you could keg it like you say, but uh, I found, I think it's half teaspoon of white sugar in a 12 ounce bottle is mm. sugar to prime you know that amount yeah mm -hmm. you could even just he says they're still alive like he's like put them in you know how he shipped them to us in these like pet soda bottles yeah wrapped to heck and back in duct tape and he's like well alive he's in like, what way still fermenting i think even though the number doesn't go down i mean it's part of the magic and weirdness yeah. of this thing that i think it's still or you could just bottle it still in like pressure bottles that can take pressure yeah mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, what these jugs are the flip tops or the soda bottles. yeah 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 mm -hmm. that's what you're saying yeah but I'd also like mm -hmm. to like straight up carb something just to go mm -hmm. completely oh, mild with it. I would for sure them. do those kegs if you have two of those kegs. Yeah. But with it being raw, I think it'd be really interesting to like put one away and forget about it for a while and try it again in like a year, you know, hmm. see what the. Well, that's what I'm saying. The like the twelve, the twelve ounce, you know, you could do three, four, twelve ounce of each one and mm -hmm. just yeah, label them and stick them away. Which of these did you prefer? The Norwegian one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think. I don't know why. I mean, I like the fruitiness. It's a little mm -hmm. sweeter. Like when you go to the one that's a little bit drier and thinner, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, maybe I like the sweeter one in this case. I think it is like a testament to like that. Yeah, I think you were saying how like 
commercially here in the United States, you think of Kabike, oh, it's like this one thing, I'm going to make a Kabike and it's going to turn out like this, but this is like showing how, how much variety and how like, you mm -hmm. know, depending on what region it comes from, what homestead it comes from, like everybody's got kind of a little bit of a different thing going. Yeah. Like there's definitely similarities, but it's almost kind of hard to pick a favorite in that sense that it's like, they're not. Oh, everybody has a favorite <laughs> child. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like this half of ice and we spit wheat better than the other one. It's like, they're, there's more, yeah. di more difference. Uh, I do. Going on between the two. Than I that. do. I I will say I do prefer the Norwegian one. But yeah, but he said that they're different. When he was okay. giving me the recipe for this, he was like, "Use this one. It comes off a little fruity." He actually said it comes. He's like, "I get a barrel aged character without the barrel," but I did not get that. Maybe I, that's different in it's America. A, it's kind of a cool idea that you have that you split it because I made my batch and I have. <laughs> five gallons of it and if I do it again I'll probably have five more gallons of you know whatever else and I was like I don't need five gallons of either of these versions yeah I just wanted it enough to see well so to your point though mm -hmm. um, there isn't a Kavike beer yeah but um, this yeast strain is taking the brewing industry somewhat by storm I think I mean I don't know if you've yeah. seen much about it but there's I read a whole article on Kavike IPAs they're making mm -hmm. IPAs with this yeast and using the fruity, mm -hmm. pineapple-y yep. characteristics from the yeast, combining it with all the hop results yep. that you know that you can get from the different hops that everyone's familiar mm -hmm. with. And they're fermenting them warm. They don't gotta worry about temperature control as much. They're turning them around fast. Yeah. They're getting attenuation. It's just this yeah. Almost like a miracle yeast that is like going into the industry. I don't know how to end this. Good start. <laughs> good, good experiment. Just convike it. It's good beer. Just convike it. <laughs> Hot dog. Yeah. Thanks, Imperial. Thanks, Ivar. as yeah. wide as both I'm sure there's somebody taller than you. I'm sure there is, but I'm, I'm sure there is too. I'm too big. Chip. No, you're not. <laughs> Chip always focuses on that. I'm sure people, like, do you yeah. play basketball? Like, no, <laughs> shut how's, up. How's the weather up there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it really hot up there? You're so close to the sun. <laughs> Vikings a thousand years ago weren't Bro, like, oh, oh I wonder if the splashback's gonna oxidize <laughs> my raw ale. <laughs> <laughs>